the topic for the today's uh, uh, discussion is internet of things sec uh, security challenges and opportunities so uh, in this lecture we are going to discuss about the basic of first of all basic about the internet of things and then what are the different uh, security and privacy issues are there and if some of the students are from the uh, masters and then we are going to discuss a little bit about the how we can solve the re issues related to the securities and what are the different scopes uh, if we are talking about in terms of uh, your uh, research areas okay so for that at least you should have the basic idea about the uh, your computer network or a uh, little bit about about your advanced computer network or maybe a little bit about the wireless sensor networks then uh, i think it will be more appropriate to you but i will try my level best to make it more uh, generalized or ground to level things so that it will be more easy to understand you if you have any issues you can stop me any at any time no problem okay so this is the road map for today's lecture which we are going to cover so first of all uh, because this is uh, uh, internet of things so i don't think so that uh, this is a compulsory subject uh, at least in uh, btech uh, either it, this may be some optional subjects or maybe some uh, or maybe some advanced subjects available but for that one uh, that's why we are just going for the basic introduction initially then goal of the iot is then elements what are the different components and issues which are we are going to face in iot then we are going for basic which we are going to cover security and privacy privacy then a little bit about the defending uh, against various attacks and what are the uh, different approaches uh, may be there when we are trying to mitigate the uh, this kind of attacks and then what are the different iot services or security services are available and uh, what can we provide with the help of that okay so uh, first of all uh, uh, which uh, the basic question why we need the iot so uh, we already uh, uh, listen I, I think this is the third day of uh, uh, this particular workshop and uh, uh, so you already familiar with why we are using iot and everybody wants uh, this kind of concept in their, their home automation or their uh, advanced agriculture system or maybe advanced uh, uh, smart city vehicle management and uh, smart energy conservation so we already uh, have the familiar idea about the iot and uh, so uh, first of all uh, why we need uh, iot so uh, do you think a fruit will ever be able to tell it a story uh, it is ripe or not so this will concern uh, about all the uh, agriculture issues so if there are some advanced technologies are available by which they can tell us that they are now ready to uh, uh, utilize or they are ready to use these particular devices or uh, these particular of um, systems then it will be quite uh, easy to handle all these things okay and again uh, there are some another issues uh, uh, which we concerned uh, why we need iot so do you think it is possible to teach traffic to speak now we can create a uh, you can consider like that uh, if there is a um, traffic management system is there and right now what we are doing if we are talking about the simple traffic management system and we just make sure that there is a, a timer based concept is there so uh, if traffic is heavy loaded then we will make sure that there, uh, this particular road will be uh, blocked for a certain amount of time now is that possible that instead of just going for the timer based uh, concept is that possible ki we are going for some another mechanism by which the uh, traffic will be learned by itself or maybe devices can uh, understand or devices will learn how the traffic is uh, heavy loaded or how, how the road is uh, empty or there are some other issues in the road or it may be possible that there are some accidents going on this particular path okay so is that possible we can uh, uh, we can create or we can provide some environment in which traffic can or uh, devices can tell itself that this particular uh, area is overloaded or this particular area is uh, easy to go okay and again you can think about a car can call an ambulance faster than a phone and now suppose there is some uh, if you're talking about the smart vehicle system then uh, if there is some accident is there and uh, when uh, we are talking about the smart vehicle system so if uh, they will identify that is there any uh, uh, that particular path is uh, empty or that particular path is heavy loaded and again if there is a, some kind of accident is happen then in, uh, there will be some auto generated call should be there either to be the ambulance or maybe the nearest police stations so uh, these are the uh, these are just ideas uh, which we think about and uh, i with the help of the iot's we can implement all these things another uh, example of that one is can you imagine an ambulance that gathers critical patient information before arriving at the hospital now suppose there is a patient is there after getting a car crash 
the uh, suppose car call the ambulance and then ambulance come and took that particular person and he will just analyze what is the critical condition of that particular person right now and he will send a message to the nearest hospital hospital and uh, ask for the critical uh, information or critical uh, requirement whatever the requirement of that particular patient right now and give that information to that particular uh, hospital and according to that that uh, then further processing can take place so we are thinking about all these things and uh, with the help of the iot we can uh, provide the solution of these problems. These are the just limited problems I am talking about. There are different, different kind of concept. You think and IoT can uh, provide you the solution for the same. So uh, uh, that's basically depend on the uh, imagination power of a human being. So if you think you can do, uh, you can apply anything, then uh, uh, all the devices uh, now, in the case of the IoT, basically the definition of this one is internet of things. Now each and everything, if you connect that one and they start communicating communicating with each other then you can make sure that uh, this uh, everything will be happen and everything will, will be automated okay so uh, basically if we're talking about the definition or what is the core idea of uh, iot so you can consider that this is a basically simple network of physical objects so you can consider like that suppose just take an example of your uh, home automation or just whatever uh, you uh, you uh, room you are using you can consider that this is suppose my single room is there okay and in this particular room there are different different devices are there let's suppose these are the devices now they may be any devices okay now suppose the devices your just maybe your refrigerator okay and this may be your suppose your tv is there now this may be some another device this may be some another device and these if these object are starting communicating with each other and according to that they uh, trying to provide the facility to that particular human being or that particular owner of that particular house then it will be more easy to uh, just uh, uh, getting the facilities okay so uh, you can consider that uh, this is just a simple uh, collection of physical objects now we are just saying that each and every object just trying to communicate with each other so basically if we are talking about roughly what is iot so iot's are just basically collection of these devices and then these devices how they are communicating with each other okay so they we can say that there are devices are there so, so uh, basic component of that one is devices and then how they are communicating with each other so communication so you can say that this is uh, how these are the uh, uh, what are the different kind of devices are there and how we can communicate with the uh, between these devices that is the basic core idea of iot so when we're talking about the devices, so you can consider that this is an embedded system with electronics or softwares or maybe sensor actuators and so on. So this is these are end devices. In this case, suppose uh, this end devices is a just refrigerator, and in this suppose this is a just simple temperature sensor. So he is sensing the temperature of the room and according to that he will just inform to the refrigerator okay the uh, outside room is so much hot or so you have to just do that uh, and you have to perform these actions and you have to just cooling more faster as compared to the previous cases or maybe suppose there is a ac is there which is uh, again again working on some kind of electronics devices or electronic chips and then there is a, some kind of software will be there and then temperature uh, this sensor will communicate with this device and then tell that now uh, it is uh, not appropriate to working on the 24, 24 degree, you have to work on the 18 or 17 degree and so on. So uh, this uh, enables object to exchange data with manufacturer, operators, other device to the network infrastructure. So we can say that the IoT is basically or devices are there, which are basically either maybe the electronics or software or sensors or maybe actuators, then there are some kind of uh, connectivities between them so uh, for connectivities you already know about the computer networks so same concept is applicable in the case of iot again so there should be some kind of infrastructure is available so predefined infrastructure is available for the networking and you have to use that one but the concept is now because we have to apply this computer network concept on the different different devices okay so now because that there are devices are trying to communicate so these devices may be tiny in size, okay, and they are uh, they are uh, 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 energy efficiency of that one is very low again, and uh, uh, the size of this one is very low, okay. So they cannot consume so much large amount of data. So according to that, we have to create the environment for the same, and we have to change the computer network concept according to the end devices requirements, okay. So basic idea is basically device and communication, which we already know about the computer networks, okay. 
So what is the, uh, uh, if you're talking about the definition of IoT, so formally we can say that a network of, of uh, a network of networks which enables to identify digital entities and the physical objects, okay? So as we already uh, say is that this is, there are devices are there and uh, through some kind of communication medium, this is the network, this is the some of device D1, D2 and D3. So now you can assume that uh, because I am saying that each and every device or each and every object will work as a device. So now how you can identify these device? This is a big concern in the case of uh, uh, IoT, okay? So uh, you can say that it is a basically a network of network, which is a basically definition of IoT, which enables to identify digital entities and the physical objects. So there should be some mechanism should be there by which you can uh, identify these devices, okay? If you're uh, talking about the simple computer network, then we know that uh, there are different methods for identifying a device, either maybe some kind of addresses, okay? Or maybe there may be uh, your MAC address or maybe your IP address, okay? Or maybe in some cases there are different addresses also there uh, for the port address we are using the port address and uh, for application we are using the port address and again in some cases we are using the host name and uh, and socket is a combination of ip and port okay so now uh, ip is not able to or mac is not able to support this kind of uh, large variety of resources so we have to provide some new identification method by which you can identify these devices okay so uh, this is the, one of the major concern of the IoT, how you can identify each and every device individually. So there are some methods are there, okay? So by which we can provide the identification of the methods. So conceptually, you can say that the new identity is for the objects. And technically, you can say that, that it is just simply an extension of the internet. So in the previous cases, uh, if we're talking about the computer network, and this is just simply uh, connection between the devices or com connection between the computers or your mobile devices or in case some cases iPad. But now each and every object is a device or each and every object is an end device. So now you can say that this is just a simply extension of the internet. From the user point of view, if he's talking about, it is just providing a new space for the innovative services. So now I am saying that uh, in the previous uh, slides, we are saying that a car can interact with each other. Now uh, ambulance can interact with the hospital. So yeah, there is a new space is available. So this is a new area where you can provide the new research guidelines and you can uh, provide something new applications uh, in the real time environment and you can help the societies. So if we're talking about the basic history of uh, internet of things, so we know that uh, this is the basic uh, definition which is providing by uh, Kevin Aston in 1999. So I think uh, this uh, may be already discussed uh, if uh, uh, whenever we're talking about the IoT. So you already know that these are the, this is the first time that particular term is introduced uh, in 1999. While the first example of uh, internet of things is uh, in 1982, where there's a uh, Coke machine is uh, used uh, to report its inventory and the temperature. So this is the first kind of concept. Uh, first time they are talking about that there's a something, uh, the machine should tell about itself that what is the inventory they have and what is the temperature and what they have to action perform. Sir, sir excuse me, the slides are not moving. It's static in the first page itself. In case if you are... Uh... Okay, just a second. I, I, uh, I was fully skinned, uh, it was not moving, why it's not, now it is moving or not? Yes, sir. It's moving now, sir. So, it's visible? Yes, sir, now it's okay, sir. Okay. Uh, so, I, I have no idea why it was not moving, uh, sorry for that. Okay, so uh, we were talking about the history and uh, we can, from this particular slide, we can see that uh, if we're talking about the uh, how the uh, growth of the IoT take place, so we can say that up to uh, this particular 2020 year, uh, year 2020, there are approximately 50 billion devices are there which are connecting to the uh, internet of things, okay? So you can uh, try to uh, assume that the complexity of the uh, your real world, now we are saying that uh, there are this amount of divides, uh, uh, sorry, devices are there. Now, if you're talking about the how we can identify this one, if you use IPv4 
and in some cases we are also using the ipv6 still it is not fully implemented till now and if we are using ipv4 there is a 32 bit uh, addresses are there and uh, as the grow you can see and uh, in near approximately five years it will be two times or four times approximately of this one so you can say that with the help of 32 bit address it is not able to identify each and every object singly identification of that one so that's how uh, you can uh, find out the uh, scope of that one and the complexity of uh, these uh, tiny devices or uh, iot devices so uh, uh, you can assume like that uh, this is uh, right now in 2020 the population if you're talking about uh, the world population it is approximately 7.6 billion while there are uh, uh, devices which we are talking about or iot devices it is approximately 50 billions okay now you can assume that uh, if, uh, at each person approximately there are seven or eight devices are there okay so you can easily understand that how many uh, 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 issues will be there when you are just trying to uh, communicate with this one okay so again uh, how you can provide the infrastructure for that devices that will be a big concern and how you can identify these devices that's again a big concern for that one okay so if you're talking about the goal of the iot and according to the basic definition so the goal of the uh, internet of things is to enable things to be connected anytime any place with anything and anyone ideally using any path or network at any services okay so you can say that uh, this uh, this is basically your uh, internet of things where which is basically you can uh, distribute into uh, collection of three things where this is connectivity while this is your uh, uh, computation or your semantics or your technologies while these are the uh, your uh, identification methods so collection of this one is somehow somewhere is between this is internet of things so what is the meaning of any time? So you can uh, use any specific time or any uh, either you are moving or you are outdoor or indoor. It may be day or it may be night. And at for any place, it may be outdoor, indoor for maybe at the PCs and for anything between the PCs, between the humans and between the humans to things and things to humans. OK, so that uh, that's uh, I think you are already familiar with these things. So I'm not going to explain all these things in so much detail. Okay. Now, uh, this is the concern. Uh, if you're talking about the what is IoT, basically IoT, you can say that uh, this is the uh, combination of identification techniques, then sensing, communication, computation, services, and semantics. Okay. So now you can uh, consider like a, that uh, scenario. This is my suppose my room is there, uh, seminar room is there. There are some uh, objects are there. So this is one object. Maybe suppose this is another object. There are different different objects are there. Okay, and now uh, uh, suppose uh, uh, these uh, these are suppose kind of sensors may be there. Okay, and they just sense the information, and then they will pass this information to each other. Now something like that, and then uh, they will pass this information to the some kind of uh, your um, backend server. So that you can consider like that. This is my backend server. Okay, now so they will just uh, collect this information. Then this information will pass to the backend server. For simplicity, let's assume this backend service is again in the same network. Okay. And if you more complex, then now there is a, another network is there. This is another network, network 2. So now you have to apply the gateway here. Okay. So for simplicity, just assume that this is within a simple network, same network. So now the sensors are collecting the information. So first of all, there should be some identification method by which you can identify these devices. And there should be some sensing should be there. So what are the different... Uh, and suppose uh, there is uh, some uh, uh, different methods for the identification. It may be possible that you are using some kind of barcode identification method, or you, you can use simple IP address based uh, identification methods. So that's depend on uh, the application which you are using. Now, after uh, uh, identification of that device, now you have to collect the information. That uh, information collecting is basically sensing. So you are just trying to sensor, sensing the information. Now, suppose there's a suppose room temperature this is a temperature sensor okay so he's just sensing the temperature so according to that information he has to perform something so now he will just uh, share this information uh, with the another devices now it may be possible that he is sharing this uh, information with the another uh, devices or maybe the backend server okay in some cases it may be possible that they are interacting with the humans so if you are working at the application layer then you can consider that they are directly interacting with the humans and the human will take the appropriate action for that. 
So after sensing, uh, you have to just go for the communication. So for communication, you have to use uh, different different technologies which are available. So uh, basic agar hum baat kare communication ki, so you are familiar with the some kind of Bluetooth technology to share the information. Then you are uh, familiar with 802.11, which is basically. Sir, again, sir, again, slides are not moving. If you can please attend to that. Just a second. Okay, uh, just a second. Let me share this video again. So now I am sharing my full screen. I think now it should be visible. Yes, sir. Just, just give me a second. Huh? Let me verify that it's moving or not. Yes, sir. It's moving. Okay, so we were here, and we were talking about the elements of IoT. So, okay, uh, I am using my uh, this uh, marker. So it it's visible. Marker is visible. Yes, sir. It's visible, sir. Okay. Okay. So we were talking about that uh, how you can identify. So this was the example which we were talking about. So uh, there's a these are the some uh, end devices or maybe the sensors. Okay. So these are the end sensors. and they are just gathering the information and then they are sharing this information either with each other or in maybe some case of the back end server okay and if we are taking the complex scenario then it will be connecting with the some kind of your gateway so you can consider this one is in the network 2 okay so this is in the, uh, this whole scenario this one is in the same network network 1 okay So first of all, there is identification. So identification is basically identify uh, how you can identify that each and every object. So for that one, you have to either use some kind of barcode or use some different different identification method or EPC method. Then uh, with the help of IP address, you can uh, again identify objects. Okay. Now uh, after getting the information, uh, identify the object, you can just trying to collect the information with the help of sensing. So you will. Uh, and suppose there is a uh, temperature sensor is there he is just trying to sensing uh, the environment and uh, just share this information with the uh, your either maybe the these objects uh, device 2 device 3 or maybe the end device or maybe the back end server okay in some cases it may can share the application with the applications okay or maybe the humans okay now after communication and uh, the, uh, if there is a, some kind of computation is you have to perform so suppose uh, in some cases computation will be take place at the same end in some cases uh, computation will be taking place at the uh, receiver end okay okay and uh, receiver means your back end server so he will just simply give the information to the uh, back end server and back end server will uh, compute compute that what uh, action he has to perform suppose temperature bahut zyada tha so now he has to switch on the ac then he will compute this all the computation then he will send the signal to the appropriate uh, uh, device you you have to turn off this one or you have to turn on that one okay and uh, uh, on the basis of that if there is a uh, some uh, applications are there and you wanted to perform some actions that one so there should be some kind of appropriate services may be there now there is some another uh, part which is basically semantic this is the very crucial portion so now you, uh, and again if you are uh, interested in research further then you have to just choose this one this is very good concept uh, in terms of research oriented okay so what is the meaning of the semantic here now you just assume that this uh, object or this object may be of different vendors or may be of different uh, organizations or may be of different kind of uh, uh, devices so then they have to share the information now it may be possible that this is using some kind of different kind of uh, uh, language or uh, um, uh, identity uh, or uh, methods to print that things okay now he is using some different kind of method or different kind of languages or different kind of modules for printing the information now when they are trying to inform each other how will they will cooperate with each other or interoperability how will work that is the basic part of the semantics so yahan pe kuch isne information gather ki hogi now that he will gather this information he want to share this one so how he can read that this information is same for the, uh, uh, he how this information will be useful for this device it should be in some kind of same format otherwise it is uh, useless for this particular device you can consider like that this is suppose uh, another country or maybe another state and this may be another state 
if there is no common language then how these can devices can interact so there should be some kind of semantics uh, should be there so that they can interact or they can solve the issues related to the uh, whatever the problem is there so if you're talking about the different elements and if you're talking about the what are the protocols which are uh, using for that for identification uh, we can use these kind of uh, protocol either maybe the epc maybe u code maybe some kind of barcode or line chart or maybe there then there are some uh, uh, methods for uh, your ip addresses so either it may be ipv4 or ipv6 ipv6 is not uh, so much used uh, at least in, in indian culture so till now we are using ipv4 so that is again used here then for sensing uh, you are, have to collect the information in the environment to enrich the functionality of the system for that one you have to use uh, uh, different different sensors are there so either using with the help of the RF, rfid tag or actuators or embedded sensors you can in, uh, sense the informations for communication now there are different different methods are there so if you are using simple uh, your computer network then it may be either wi-fi or you can use the uh, either 802.11 for wi-fi or 802.3 for ethernet now uh, because uh, there are some limitation uh, if we are using 802.3 or 802.11 in the case of uh, uh, internet of thing because uh, the size of the devices are very small and uh, there is a little bit uh, uh, there is uh, energy conservation is a very big issue in the case of internet of thing so we have to think about something else so there are different different protocols are there and bluetooth maybe you can use up to some extent again there is 802.15.4 or maybe the z wave or uh, this is basically you can say that the zigbee for uh, your basic protocol okay and for lower two layer you can say that this is the zigbee uh, extension then there may be some another method maybe the uh, wi-fi direct you can use then there are rfid there then there is a, some another uh, protocol which are basically six low pan are there so there are different different uh, uh, extensions are there uh, for providing the communication with the help of uh, in the sorry in the iot environment for computation you have to need hardware and software again uh, predefined hardwares are not able to support uh, your uh, you know, tiny devices so you have to just create new one uh, most popular are uh, arduino there is a raspberry pi there is a smartphones are there and there are smart uh, smart things are there okay and if we're talking about the software again you cannot directly interact with the uh, your windows version or android version so you have to just uh, provide the different operating system or the uh, new uh, uh, new uh, uh, operating system which are not so much uh, 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 powerful as compared to the previous cases okay so just creating a new operating system which can communicate uh, with uh, which are suitable for the tiny objects like uh, os which, which is basically tiny os or lit, light os or android and in some cases hadoop can also work for that one but, but uh, uh, there is a there are some limitation if you, you are using hadoop in the case of iot then for services, there is identity related shippings, maybe there are information aggregation, maybe there. And for semantics, then uh, there are web ontology languages are there, and then resource description frameworks are there. Okay, so these are some elements, and these are some uh, uh, you can say that the services or some your uh, protocols are there by we which can be used for IoT devices. So now uh, these are the uh, IoT devices. There should be some kind of backend servers, and uh, there should be some database management systems. If uh, your uh, tiny device is having the sufficient amount of uh, storage, then uh, there is no uh, storage is required. And if the, uh, that devices are stateless, then in that case you have to just store the information in some kind of uh, backend server or in some kind of database. Okay. Then there should be some kind of websites. Uh, these are basically uh, websites or ERP are basically used when there is a uh, industrial IOTs are used or you are using uh, these uh, uh, applications for some kind of your uh, business or some kind of, uh, you want to use application layer on that one. Then uh, there's a very big role for the gateway. Now, uh, if we, uh, we already, uh, yes, yeah, this one, uh, if up to this point, there's no issue. And uh, we already say that if within a single network, there is no need of the gateway, then there is no issue. When you are just trying to share the information with the another networks. Okay. Now suppose there is a scenario. There are two agriculture fields are there. 
and there are this agriculture field F1 and there is agriculture field F2 and both are not at the appropriate location, same location. So they are just connect, connecting with the, some another uh, your cloud storage or your, your in, uh, some another kind of storage and your uh, virtually they are connected or this is the support backend server. So now you can consider that this is my network N1 and this is my network N2. When we're trying to communicate between N1 and N2, then you have to share the information with the this, uh, with the help of your gateways. Okay. So when uh, now the complications of that one is very large because now you have to assume that we have to just we're just trying to share the information and this again these are not compatible information and in you in one uh, network you can create a communication network. Maybe suppose you are using 802.11. Eleven, maybe suppose, and suppose here eight zero two one three, and again there are different different devices are there, and different different constraints are applicable on this one. Now at the application layer, again you can consider uh, suppose they are using co protocol COAP while they are using some another protocol maybe your MQTT. So now when they are trying to share the information with this one, then there is a very big concern, uh, and in that case gateway will play a very big role for that if you are trying to inter. Uh, and communicate between the different different networks okay so uh, again uh, gateway plays a very crucial role for that one then uh, iot peripheral devices which are basically your uh, sensors or actuators are there so these are the components of iot when you are talking about the uh, uh, internet of things now these are the uh, characteristics of iot so they are massively scalable and efficient so the biggest property of the iot is this is uh, it is scalable okay and now this is the biggest concern also so now you are saying that everything is connecting to the internet now how you can make sure that uh, they can appropriately sharing the data and how they can communicate because some devices are very large and some devices are very small okay then uh, again for the identification there is a, again big issue is there so because we are not able to deal with ip addresses anymore so how you can interact uh, or you how you can identify each and every object so uh, abundance of physical object object is present that does not use the ip so iot is made possible so we have to uh, because if you're talking about the some clothes are there or some devices are there which are using some kind of barcode so because for that we doesn't need some kind of ip addresses that's why uh, objects can be identified with the help of some kind of uh, another methods and that's make possible or that's make quite easy to use iot so in the case of IoT devices are basically using less power and they are tiny devices are there. And, uh, and because the size of that one or due to the less energy consumption of that, uh, we have to just think about some um, mechanisms so that they are less power consumable devices are there. So, uh, so there should be some mechanisms when we are not using that devices. So they should be go for the automatically sleep mode. Okay. So uh, you can consider like that. Uh, your um, mobile is there so uh, in the case of your mobile uh, saving uh, energy so in that case uh, after a certain period of time the skin will be sleep in the going into sleep mode you can consider again the same scenario uh, uh, if your uh, you are not using your uh, screen of window screen up uh, sorry uh, laptop ki skin agar aap use nahi kar rahe, so that will be that device or that particular laptop will be going to the sleep mode after a certain period of time so you have to just uh, save the energy because they are tiny devices and uh, uh, providing the permanent power to those devices are not feasible solution okay in some cases you can do that agar aapko sensor lagana hai suppose in the case of your room that possible koi issue nahi now just suppose a scenario uh, where you have to create a underwater sensor network in that case it is not feasible to connect the uh, all the devices throughout the uh, battery backup or aapko uh, energy uh, energy power se aap 24 hours usko connect nahi kar sakte okay so in that case you have to just create a scenario or you have to use that devices which are uh, basically using uh, or uh, saving the energy more efficiently as compared to the other devices okay so a device that is connected to another device right now may not be connected in the another instance of time you can as again create the same consideration so uh, because all the devices are not always in the wake mode so it may be possible uh, right now there is a, some devices are in the wake mode in the certain period of time they are not and there may be some other devices may be there 
okay so intermittent connectivity is there uh, iot devices are not always connected in order to save bandwidth and battery consumption device will be powered off periodically and when not in use otherwise connection might turn unreliable and thus pro prove to be inefficient so there should be some kind of mechanism if a particular device is not there then you have to just uh, uh, find out the another path uh, otherwise it will be unreliable or there is no use of that particular uh, environment so now uh, this is uh, the slides for the architecture of iot and uh, i think there is no meaning of that per, uh, particular slide in this particular lecture but still i put that one here because when we are talking about the security so we should understand that security in the case of iot may be different for the different different layers okay so uh, we should know at least if you are familiar with the computer network then you are familiar with how many layers are there and in, either we are using tcp ip or we are using the osi model so in the case of uh, tcp or osi there are some uh, layer architecture is there and each and every layer having some kind of different functionality and they just uh, blindly they just taking the data and just forwarding to uh, doing their task and then forward that data to the upper layer or the lower layer whatever it is okay so there are different different uh, architecture models are there and if you say that uh, in the case of cn there are two models are there which are more popular either it is tcp or tcp ip or it is osi there is no such a model exist in the case of iot architecture according to the application you have to change the architecture now suppose uh, in my case i wanted to create a scenario in that case uh, i have to just uh, communicate with the two devices so in that case there is uh, two or three layers are sufficient while in the case of uh, some another example where you have to communicate with another devices and you have to uh, uh, share this information with back end also and you have to just uh publish some uh, content on the your uh, website also okay in that case you have to need some another another uh, applications so ek example consider karo suppose uh, you are uh, in the your uh, your uh, department so this is suppose my department and in my department there are some devices are there and if suppose this device is faulty and then i have to just give the information to the uh, official website so this particular device is not working and i have to publish this information on the your official websites okay so in that case uh, there is there because there is devices are there so there should be some base layer will be there this is basically your physical layer in osi model or object layer or perception layer in this case then they should share the information with each other there should be some communication then they have to share this information with the some kind of uh, official website so there should be some kind of application layer, layer should be there and again if you wanted to apply the uh, chart of that one or uh, what how much lifetime of this device and uh, you wanted to present in the form of graph or in the form of efficiency you are just trying to print percentage of that one then in this case you have to need some another layer also which is just creating the charts and uh, tables for that so according to the applications uh, there may be different different architecture may be possible so some are using the three layer architecture which is basically just simply perception layer which is uh, as equivalent as data link layer and the physical layer in the case of your tcp ip and uh, or osi the second one is your network layer which is equivalent to your simple network layer in osi model and this is your application layer application layer is basically combination of your uh, all the upper layers or transport layer or application layer in the case of your uh, tcp ip model and there may be some different model will be there and then in some cases there will be middleware layer uh, and then in the case of the uh, service uh, agreement architecture in that case you have to use different different layer if you are creating the application which is basically business oriented like this one where you have to just create a chart for that or you have to create the table for that layer may be different so concept of layer uh, are according to the applications basically or according to your requirement okay so if you are using in the healthcare system your architecture may be different if you are using some kind of uh, uh, industrial iot then uh, this model may be different okay or this architecture may be different so just uh, uh, just assume like that this is just simple your uh, base layer or your physical layer this one will be your uh, as a data link layer or your uh, uh, your network layer while this is your transport layer this is your just uh, application layer and this one will be added for the business purposes which is basically creating the chart of that one so whatever uh, then we are talking about the services or oh, sorry security and privacy so we will talk about the uh, only the uh, physical layer and data link layer which you are familiar we are not going to talking about the object layer or object abstraction layer 
because it may be depend and it may be changed from one perspective to another perspective okay so if we are talking about the issues uh, this is till now we are discuss the basic of the iot okay and uh, introduction of iot so if we talking about the issues of iot these are the some issues so they should be there is no appropriate architecture is there so that's basically depend on your application if you are creating another uh, application then that may be changed now suppose now suppose you wanted to create uh, a architecture which will be applicable in all the cases so there is a plenty of uh, uh, options are there you can create your own architecture and uh, if you are uh, if you wanted to perform something or you wanted to do research in the case of iot then you can provide some new kind of architecture which can, which may be applicable for at least for an uh, specific area or a specific domain okay so there is a requirement of architecture you can provide that one then interoperability as we already discussed there are different different devices are there how they will interact with that one because it may be possible one device is working on that different configurations or different communication methods or maybe publishing the method in um, publishing the message in different format while in the case of the second one uh, second ob uh, object may be having the different different configurations so how they uh, operate with each other or how this interoperability will be provided that is again a big concern so already uh, a sufficient amount of work is already done on that one but still the area is very uh, quite open okay then scalability of the iot so again when we are saying that the iot what is the benefit of iot scalability is concerned so uh, scalability is uh, both a good thing as well as the bad thing because uh, uh, scal uh, network should be scalable and he should be incorporated in such a way so that if you are just trying to increase the number of end user we can cooperate for, for that then uh, mobility uh, again uh, uh, there are different different objects are there and if you are using some scenario in which uh, they are suppose a smart vehicle system is there so object is basically mo moving so you have to just create uh, the environment or you have to just create the scenario or application according to just considering this one mobility okay then performance of uh, uh, this is a uh, always a big concern the quality of services or the performance of the network is not up to the mark till now and we can improve that one then management is there then uh, there is a security and privacy so uh, now just create a scenario now you are saying that i am using home automation in the case of home automation there are my end devices are there these are the end devices and suppose they are sharing this information that uh, suppose this is my uh, one device and he is just sensing the temperature and according to the temperature sensing he is just give the information to the another another devices now according to the temperature human body temperature sensing now he will identify that there is no one in the room now he will share this information to the devices okay now you have to turn off the tv or turn off the uh, your suppose maybe ac now just assume a scenario now suppose when they are passing this information from this device to this is device now there is a some kind of uh, security threat is there and somebody is trying to uh, capture this particular message jab ye message ja raha hoga yahan pe this is the message when you are transferring this message to this one now uh, this message is suppose seen by some another person maybe a person is there he can see in this one now he can identify that right now there is no person is available in the uh, this particular house okay so this is uh, oh, simple uh, for that particular person now the home is alone and if you wanted to perform some action you can do that okay now uh, this is just a big concern uh, uh, again uh, they are just sharing the information again in some cases they are storing this information to the back end server now suppose there is a tv is there and tv and tv just making sure that what are your uh, your uh, your habits uh, according to your uh, what channels you are watching according to that he is just creating the database and then sharing this information to the your whatever the cable uh, operator is there so now uh, they are just sharing the information now your uh, with the help of this information he will identify what are your uh, your hobbies are there what are you are wanted to watch or what is your uh, interest area of interest so then this information can be further shared and it may be possible that it may be harmful in some cases okay so security and privacy is a big concern and they are uh, very uh, in past i think uh, two or three years they are very big uh, attacks were there in which there are some robberies are happens in the house and uh, they just breach the security of this particular devices they just simply spoof this particular message 
and on the basis of this message they will identify that there is no person in the home is right now and uh, this is the correct time to uh, store something okay then uh, uh, if you are talking about the uh, issues then availability uh, uh, if we create such a scenario which is more secure but it is not available to anyone uh, if even uh, end devices or your authentic user is not able to uh, hand, uh, identify or use these devices then what is the meaning of that particular scenario so availability should be there so who are the authorized person they can should avail this uh, services then whatever uh, infrastructure you are providing that should be reliable and uh, uh, there is a uh, appropriate de uh, deployment of the sensor nodes and if you see there this uh, last uh, option deployment of sensor net nodes so you can consider sir uh, if suppose we have to create a room here what should be the deployment of this, uh, uh, this particular sensor so we can say that we should deploy here so that the uh, all the corners will be in the range of this one okay now this is just a uh, looking like that is a, it is a trivia problem but when we are talking about the research and we are talking about the how we can deploy a sensor that's again uh, deployment of a sensor is a big concern okay uh, i give you example and uh, uh, we were in the uh, uh, i visited uh, gangtok so i was there in the gangtok in the uh, hotel room and they are using some kind of sensor devices so the, their sensors are there and the sensor is basically uh, working on the basis of a height okay so he will identify that uh, if a person having the specific height then they will identify that the person is available in the room and then they will share this information uh, to the your uh, uh, back end back end means your tv will be switch off or switch on on that one then your ac will be switch on on switch off according to that so uh, now they deploy this one on the uh, top of the uh, your roof and they will uh, that particular sensor is working on uh, there so now in the room there were two uh, two kids were there uh, which are hardly four or five years old so they were available in the room and they were watching the tv and uh, suddenly uh, uh, sensor uh, uh, find out that there is a no sufficient person is available in the room and then just simply switch off the tv and switch off the ac so uh, this was the concern that uh, now in that case first of all the choice of the sensor is not appropriate we discuss with the uh, uh, your hotel management and then say, they says that sir according to our convenience we use this particular sensor so according to that uh, sensor is not appropriate according to my convenience uh, i think there should be some kind of different sensors maybe there and second one and uh, then uh, uh, what should be the time and when they will take place from uh, identifying to switch off that particular thing and second one is how far they are applying this uh, device uh, on the roof of that one it may be on the this particular edge it may be on the this particular edge or this particular edge or this particular edge so this is just a simple uh, example i am giving but again you can think about if you are creating an application then uh, uh, cost efficiency of that one and uh, the uh, efficiency of your network are a big concern so you have to just uh, create a scenario in that you have to just deploy the sensor appropriately and there are different different research works are going on how you can deploy a sensor and if you consider this one as a mo uh, more serious problem if uh, if we are using this scenario uh, in the underwater sensor network so if you are deploy a sensor in the case of underwater sensor network then what should be the deployment mechanism आपका डिप्लॉयमेंट मैकेनिज्म कैसा होना चाहिए और कहाँ पे आपको डिप्लॉय करना है और बिकॉज दे आर अगेन यू कैन नॉट रिप्लेस फ्रीक्वेंटली सो यू शुड बी यूज दैट हैवी लोडेड और हैवी कंप्यूटेशन डिवाइसेस शुड बी एट द बैक एंड और हैवी कंप्यूटेशन डिवाइसेस शुड बी एट द टॉप एंड सो यू हैव टू जस्ट थिंक ऑल दिस थिंग्स एंड देन यू हैव टू डिप्लॉय दैट सेंसर्स इन द केस ऑफ डिप्लॉयमेंट ऑफ सेंसर so now let's come to the point uh, which we have to cover in this particular lecture so iot security risk and the challenges so whatever uh, we have discussed till now so there are risk that are typical in any internet system so we are familiar with the computer networks so there are different different risks are there in the uh, in the term of internet so there is a, uh, a full fledged uh, subject is there internet uh, network security or your computer security or information security or maybe cryptography in some colleges okay so all the concerns of uh, all the issues which are there in the case of your uh, security books are already available in in the case of iot instead of that there are some issues uh, which are basically related to the space okay uh, module Thank <laughs> you.
Sir, your voice is missing. Sir, your voice is not audible, sir. this one yes sir yes sir so i am audible now yes sir okay. so these are some network issues uh, sorry for that uh, my screen is visible yes sir mm, okay so we were talking about the network uh, IoT security risks and challenges. So there are some issues which are already uh, available in the case of internet system that are already available in the IoT also. So there are some uh, risk or there are some issues with the IoT device. And there is safety to ensure no harm is caused by using, misusing the actual devices. Okay, so we have to just take care of all these things when we are talking about the security in terms of IoT. So if you're talking about the security, IoT security deals with ensuring the safety of devices and network integrity under the fabric of IoT. So first of all, device or physical security devices are at the core of IoT and are responsible for collecting data and interacting with other devices. So since devices, there's a camera is there, there's a sensor is there. Normally, uh, if uh, uh, if uh, your uh, your attacker is smart enough or uh, having the background of uh, technical background then he will try to steal this information through some technical knowledge but if it is if he is not smart enough or he is just a simple attacker then he will just simply destroy that particular device okay so even in existence of robust network unauthorized physical access to the iot device can lead to a catastrophic system failures so now, uh, whatever the security challenges, if you're talking about in the case of your computer network, either it is authentication, confidentiality, availability, data integrity, or maybe non-reproduction, access control, privacy, data verification, scalability, all the security challenges are also available in the, in the case of IoT. So meaning of that one is again same. Authentication means uh, whatever the information you are to send, then that will be authentic information. That means you, the use user will be uh, having some kind of authentication uh, ID and only with the help of that ID, he will send the information. Confidentiality means again, the same concept, uh, whatever you are trying to send, it should be uh, delivered in, the, in a confidential manner. Okay. So no third person can see or watch that particular device uh, content. And he is not, re uh, uh, he's not uh, uh, alteration of that particular information. Okay. So uh, that again, confidentiality and integrity in the case of integrity, you are not uh, third person is not able to uh, change the information availability. If you are authentic user, then at least you can in, use this information. So availability should be there for the authentic users. And there should be non reputation, then access control will be there. And uh, privacy is basically uh, if you are sharing some information, then this information will be uh, uh, secure enough. And that will be not available to uh, each and everyone. And uh, only the, the those are uh, uh, privileged to access this information. Only the, those can access that information. Okay. So in the case of data verification, whatever data you are trying to uh, give, that should be verified. And that should be in a specific range. Uh, if you are talking about the temperature, and your temperature sensor is working on suppose 0 to 25 degree. So it will not having the 125 temperature, so on. Just a second. So now security threats to the IoT devices. If we're talking about the different different level, so at the physical attacks, uh, we, if we're talking about the threats, there are different different attacks are there. But it should be the attacks procedure and what should be the security requirements, and uh, the example of that one. Okay, so if there's a physical attack is there, so, uh, then uh, you can say that uh, uh, directly you are just. Uh, uh, breaking that particular hardware or you are just tamper with the hardware and the other uh, your components so in this case uh, security requirement is tamper resistance so there should be some kind of uh, 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 case will be there and in which you can store this in uh, this device and there should be some uh, hardware uh, 
security for that particular device should be there okay and layout reconstruction and micro probing is the example for that particular uh, kind of threats uh, physical threats then environmental attack uh, if you you are in the wrong environment then it may be possible that uh, your environment can harm you okay now suppose you are uh, these are the devices and these are your is in such a case your environment is uh, malicious environment is there then it may be possible whatever you are trying to transfer the data in this case that the malicious uh, uh, inform uh, this malicious attacker or malicious nodes can uh, get this information so device encryption key can be discovered by the attacker by recovering the encryption information so uh, security requirement for that uh, your secure encryption scheme and uh, uh, what are the examples for that one either maybe the timing attack or maybe the side channel attack on fault tolerance at, uh, fault analysis attacks so they are basically a uh, kind of passive attacks are there they are just trying to gather gather the information and then they reuse this information then uh, crypto analysis attacks are there when in that case you are just encrypted your information in some form and sent to the uh, destination but again destination uh, uh, this information is received from the destination or uh, that particular device having the some kind of uh, code available for that and uh, that then he can recover the actual text code from from there okay so find the zipper text to break the encryption so he is sending some kind of uh, message uh, this message is basically zipper text okay so it is uh, message encrypted form is called the basically zipper text okay so that uh, is, that message is come here in some kind of encryption form and then you uh, uh, get this information and just uh, 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 there are some kind of codes are there or you could just break or just you just do some kind of reverse engineering or decryption on that and just find out the actual message so there should be some secure encryption algorithm should be there for the uh, uh, if you wanted to uh, provide the security for that one and the uh, example of that one is known plain text attacks and chosen plain text attacks are there so uh, when you are sending the message uh, you have the information or in the some case when you are getting the output message then you have the information about these then you can perform this kind of attacks then there are some software attacks are also possible in that case you know the uh, some another term which are basically your trojan horse or bomb or viruses are there so there are you just uh, just providing the malicious code and then this malicious code will run automatically or in some cases they will be injected from the outside and execute from the outside and then they will just uh, perform their task and just simply uh, crash your systems so how you can prevent that one with the help of some kind of proper antivirus updates okay so if you talk uh, talk about the taxonomy according to the iot process phase now then you can see that uh, different phases may be there in terms of iot attacks so there may be uh, data pre processing then there may be some kind of attacks are possible when you are just storing that information then it may be possible that uh, some attacks are possible here then when you are just doing the computation for that then there are some kind of uh, attacks may be possible when you are just transmitting this data from one device to another device then there may be a kind of data, uh, uh, attacks are possible and in some cases you are, you are transferring the data from source to end devices then it may be again the possibilities of the attacks so these are the different different attacks are there and uh, different different phases where the attack can take place so if you are talking the data uh, perception you are just collecting the data so there may be data leakage may be there or breach of data or in that case data may be lost or data uh, may be your not authenticated data or maybe that your device is faulty and uh, he is just some leakage the data or it may be possible that he is just uh, uh, whatever the information he is trying to share it is not appropriate or not authentic information is there well in the case of the storage uh, attacks on availability then access control may be there you store this information in the uh, back end server now this information is available to uh, 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 that particular device but if this information is not secured enough then uh, it may be possible that some attacker or some uh, uh, another Uh, peer or another device can in, uh, get this information so what are the different attacks may be possible when you are talking about storage that information so maybe attack on the availability and uh, maybe access control maybe integrity of the data or maybe denial of service attack while intelligent processing when you are trying to performance the some kind of processing then it may be possible that uh, uh, authentication of that particular device may be uh, 
uh, issues or question okay so you it may be possible that whatever the uh, you are performing the actions that is not authentic uh, uh, authentic devices there and whatever the information uh, whatever the uh, computation you are performing that is not authentic okay while in the case of the data transmission there are different different uh, attacks are there either maybe the uh, security of that particular medium or channel or maybe that particular session is hijacked or in some cases your routing may be hampered or route uh, you can perform the attack on the router or uh, your information is uh, delivered to another devices instead of the appropriate devices or maybe some kind of flooding so flooding can uh, uh, apply the dos attacks okay then uh, uh, in the case of the end to end uh, there is a source instead of source there may be some remote login there and at the end again there is a source instead of source there is maybe some remote login there maybe machine is working as a your end devices and he is just collecting the information or just simple node is clone and uh, or whatever the information you are sending to this node this is just uh, in stored in the clone node okay so these are the basic descriptions which we uh, i already dis uh, discuss okay so these are the different different phase uh, in which different different attacks are possible in the case of your iot so if we talking about the privacy in the iot so to protect the information of individual from exposure in the iot environment so the example of that one is some manufacturer of smart tvs collect data about their consum consumers to analyze their viewing habits or their uh, area of interest so that data collected by the smart tv may be challenge for data privacy during the transmissions okay so this is just a simple uh, example and you can talk about the another example which is basically your aadhaar data okay so you just share the information in the this uh, aadhaar card now each and every information is available in your aadhaar card okay now if suppose this uh, information is hampered okay or ye agar aapka security breach hota hai so now this private information of you will be available to each and every one okay so jo isko hack karega that will contain this information okay so the most dangerous part of iot is that <clears throat> that consumer are surrendering their privacy bit by bit without realizing it okay so even <clears throat> right now uh, you are talking uh, we are interacting with a live video uh, system uh, scenario still we are sharing some information and if uh, there are some kind of attackers maybe there or this, there are kind some kind of vulnerable uh, devices are there then can they can use this information for some another purposes okay so we don't have any idea that we actually we don't bother about that those things but we have to otherwise that information may be uh, uh, more crucial for you okay so then unaware of what data is being collected and how it is being used okay so need of uh, iot privacy and security so basically there is a need of uh, iot iot privacy as well as security we already discussed the different uh, security concern and uh, uh, we have to think about the privacy also in the same manner so iot architecture provide privacy and security to make sure that the user information is hidden from the your third person or your attackers okay so privacy of the uh, user either is he or she uh, there is its personal right okay today user can be followed without their knowledge about it through traces of their activity activities on the internet okay in the matter are even worse when by collecting this type of private user data enterprise use it for their own purpose without the knowledge of the user so you can consider like that uh, you have a, a user account or you have a gmail account okay and you also having the facebook account when uh, uh, when you are just trying to search something on the google or agar aapne wo aapke browser mein by default login kiya hua hai so whatever you are trying to search and that will be uh, uh, next time when you are open your uh, facebook account they will show uh, they will share the Uh, your um, uh, your ads according to that okay so how they that will happen that is basically when you are clicking on that particular uh, your uh, ad or on that particular link they will share this information that this is the uh, visibility of that particular user in the last few hours so he will be interested in this particular scenarios okay so that's how you are just uh, um, your tampering your uh, privacy or securities so uh, what are the different requirements so they are uh, basic requirements uh, there should be user privacy should be there then there should be some uh, appropriate access control then there should be identity management so so for the user privacy step must be followed so that the information provided is able to abstain from observing the use of the lookup system related to the user 
so it will enhancing user privacy and security on every layer is now becoming the major requirements okay so you uh, there should be appropriate privacy concern should be there then access control should be there information service provider must apply any access control mechanism to protect the data from misuse and damage to private information of a user by others okay now suppose you have a bank account okay and in the bank account you store your all the informations now suppose uh, this is uh, this uh, bank or uh, maybe some private bank this start sharing this information with the another uh, maybe for the credit card purposes or maybe for bank loan purposes they will share this information with the others now your personal information is applicable to this one okay so this is not a uh, your security concern aapka data safe hai uh, this is a privacy concern okay so uh, again if you uh, some third party attack on this one then your money will be gone then this is both security as well as privacy concern then there should be some kind of identity management should be there it is a vast administrative area that deals with the identifying objects by using different techniques in a system and controlling their access by associating user right and restrictions with the recognized identity so there should be some identity management on the basis of that you will apply for the access control okay now suppose there is a bank manager is there he having different different access control while there is a end user or there is a some uh, customer is there they having the different identity and they having the different access controls are there then uh, there should be secure data transmission and uh, uh, there should be whatever you are trying to communicate within a network whatever you, protocol you are using either using zigbee or bluetooth for the example and they should be secure enough so that there is a secure data transmission can take place then it should be resilience to attacks then in the open and connected world of iot attacker can easily find and exploit any vulnerability in the system so system must have any mechanism to protect against such attacks so you have to some uh, create a some scenario and so that your information whatever information you are trying to send that will be uh, some uh, encrypted form or you can say that some secure manner you have to transfer so that no another node can attack uh, if you, some uh, third person may be able to find that information still uh, uh, they are not open to or readable to each and every one okay and there should be some kind of trust mechanism should be there and this is also one of the essential requirement of for iot so in the case of iot devices trust mechanism should be there then because they are sharing the information whom you have to share the information which is more trustworthy as compared to other devices okay so there should be some proper trust mechanism now what are the different attacks if you talking about on the uh, layer concepts so there are uh, different different layers in the case of the things layer there are the different attacks either it is jamming attacks or unfair attack replay attack or maybe uh, your node subversion leak dispersion cyber attacks are there then in the case of the edge layer or again the, this is the same Uh, in the case of edge there is a hacking is there there is a dos attack is there in the case of communication there are different different attacks are there these are the list of uh, which are basically common to your uh, uh, internet okay so these are all the possible attacks which are available in the uh, your uh, net network layer okay next is uh, application layer attacks uh, either the injection uh, from uh, uh, corrupted data or maybe buffer overflow maybe virus or maybe Uh, your worms or trojan house or maybe different multiple in the case of multiple attacks are also there so in the case of business purpose, purpose or if you are creating another charts for that one then there is a different possibilities of attacks are there so now uh, now i am going to discuss uh, 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 basic of uh, different layers and then uh, what are the different uh, possible attacks are there then we will discuss how we can mitigate those attacks so we are not going to discuss in detail and uh, i am just giving you a basic idea that what are the different different possible attacks are there and it may be possible uh, there are because there are variety of attacks are there and we cannot cover all the type of attacks and all the type of solution in a single uh, lecture so if uh, uh, so just basic idea of uh, one or two attacks for uh, appropriate layers are there okay so if you talking about the physical layer or the perception layer you can call as a perception layer also so there are basically physical damages there then there is a node capture is there so in the case of the physical damage some attacker may lack technical knowledge and their attacks are limited by the destroying the devices so they simply destroy the device they are not worry about what uh, ki we have to just getting the information no they are just simply uh, break this device and just uh, destroy this particular information okay 
well in the case of the not capture an active attacker can extract the information that the device contain instead of destroying them so he just create uh, uh, this is the suppose node a he just captured this device and there is another node b or another attacker node b he just captured this uh, and instead of just uh, communicating he will just uh, you can just create a scenario that now instead of a b will start communicating so he will just take care of all the authority and he will capture that uh, node so now this uh, b will behave like a so now if you talking about the data link layer now uh, the possible attacks which can take place in the case of data link layer now first one is collision so if you are familiar with the uh, your data link layer then you should know that there are um, medium axis layers are there so there are different different types of collisions may be there now suppose this scenario when there is a uh, there is a device a who wanted to make sure that uh, uh, this authentic this is my authentic user authentic device or this is my attacker okay so now we'll just create a scenario that uh, assume a scenario in which b is a uh, authentic user and he wanted to share the information to the another devices okay so now uh, because we are using suppose wireless medium so in the case of that uh, a is a attacker node so he will send the uh, after a certain period of time period of time he will send the uh, your simple uh, information message or maybe the hello message so that uh, there will be collision and b will not able to share the information to the another devices okay so that is a kind of your collision attacks okay then uh, 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 this is one of the possibilities uh, how you can perform the collision attacks then it may be possible that uh, this same scenario may be applicable in the case of the denial of sleep so what is the benefit of that denial of sleep because you know that these are the tiny devices and the battery or energy conservation of that one is specific so we just assume assume that this is suppose one are uh, the battery life of this one so now uh, instead of just allowing him to share the information i will just uh, uh, i will just share the for uh, this information or just hello message or your uh, rts or cts packets which are basically request to send or clear to send message or hello messages and he is not performing any work and he is not going for the sleep mode so he will just simply drain out and then he will further not available in the network so if you wanted to remove this one in the from the network then just use his uh, complete uh, energy and just simply drain out this particular device okay so how you can perform that one the possible option is just simply send the hello message so he has to respond after a uh, hello message of each hello message so he will send a hello message and he will reply again no further communication again send a hello message and again reply so his uh, he will awake for the uh, full duration and then simply drain out and then simply leave the network so now he is not a more no more available in the net then there is some kind of desynchronizations attacks may be possible so uh, in some cases uh, we know that if we are using 802.15.4 this is the your uh, uh, communication uh, protocol so uh, we know that there is a uh, channel hopping is there okay so when there is a channel hopping so we are just trying to use uh, some kind of uh, synchronization before uh, just uh, changing the channel okay so uh, what should be the benefit of channel hopping uh, there may be it may be possible that particular channel is not available ek line best hai so you can use the another line so in that case you need uh, some kind of synchronization if uh, due to uh, some uh, your uh, changing the uh, your sequence number of your packet or your uh, uh, your uh, uh, hello packets and uh, your uh, above whatever it is rts cts uh, which are basically control information so then uh, when you are just uh, control information is uh, changed then uh, this particular synchronization will be uh, 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 changed and then there is no proper channel hopping will take place and that's uh, maybe the possible uh, way by which you can attack a particular device okay then there may be exhaustion and this is again the same uh, uh, the effect of your uh, uh, your your denial of sleep okay so if there is a denial of sleep after some time of time of period of time there will be uh, the energy is consumed uh, and this is no more available in the networks okay then there may be some uh, flooding attack may be there because we are talking about the data link layer so there may be some flooding which can be applicable in the mac layer 
so you are familiar with that uh, that uh, uh, flooding or broadcasting of the message or take place at the network layer as well as the data link layer okay so some uh, uh, in the case of data link layer if there are uh, devices are uh, just sending the broadcast packet with the help of mac header format and then simply broadcast this one and just simply block uh, the services of the other devices so now they will feel congestion and they will not able to communicate with the another devices then there is a spoofing may be possible in the case of data link layer either maybe the spoofing simple spoofing or maybe the arp spoofing again the spoofing is same as we already know uh, ip spoofing so you are not uh, that particular device still you are behaving like that you are that particular device and you just share this information and you are uh, 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 you are just saying that, that right now I am A and uh, make the communication so that uh, authentic A will not able to communicate with, uh, within a network. Now, uh, uh, security threats or attacks in the case of the networks okay, or network layer. So first one is basically man in the middle attack. So this is uh, one of the more uh, famous uh, attack. In that case, you can consider like that this is my A, this is my B. And when they are sharing this information with each other, there is some uh, another uh, device is there and he will just take the information from a and just forward this information to b and just start behaving like that this is the another uh, device is there okay so again uh, uh, how we can solve this particular attack with the help of some kind of authentication approaches either there may be encryption algorithm or there may be some kind of uh, your uh, hash function may be applicable there then replay attack again the same concept and uh, a will share the information with the b now b will store this message and he will use this message in the future and he will interpret that this is the a instead of b so he will store this information here and then he will replay uh, replay this particular message to communicate with the other suppose a wanted to transfer uh, some money to the b or suppose is not pay 50 amount there or he will just verify that this is amount is transfer then again we will store this information and then he will uh, share to the other um, nodes and then collect the money from them okay so there may be possible attacks and denial of service is basically uh, there is uh, uh, some intermediate devices may be there which is basically flooding the messages in such a way so that no uh, no person is able to uh, provide the services anymore Okay, so you have to just uh, uh, generate so many packets or so many messages so that no uh, authentic user can communicate. So uh, the example of that one you can uh, consider that sometimes your sites are blocked. block ho jati hain, okay, or your sites are heavy loaded ho jati hain, and they just simply shut down. So they just uh, uh, how they will happen? They will happen. They will uh, uh, some. Uh, Either they will be authentic user more than uh, number of capacity or in some cases uh, there is some remote logins are there, remote users are there which are just uh, sending the hello packets or just uh, flooding the message in the network and just uh, allow don't allow them to get the actual users or uh, providing the resources to the actual users. Then uh, in the case of networks, there are different different uh, whole attacks are there. So. Uh, there are black hole attacks are there, which is basically uh, using this. Uh, in this case, there is a, some devices is there. There is a, a is there, suppose there is B is node is there, and then there is an intermediate device. There is a X is there. He will just uh, get this all over information and just simply drop the all the packets. So whatever you are trying to share with him, he will just simply drop that packet. Okay, and there is a sinkhole. Uh, in the case of uh, sinkhole, he will not. Uh, uh, drop all the information he will just uh, 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 use this information for the further processing okay while in the case of the selective forwardy or gray hole in the case of gray hole uh, uh, they are not dropping each and every packet while in the case of black hole he will just drop all the information while in the case of uh, gray hole he will not uh, drop all the information he just uh, drop the basic information or the information which is basically required by or uh, 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 the devices or control information pass karta rega, data information drop karta rega. you can consider like that and there is a another one is uh, warm hole in the case of warm hall you can consider there is a two devices are there a and b and they are just creating a tunnel in such a way so that uh, uh, whatever the information will be there it will be dropped in this way so basically hota gaya, uh, gray hole mein, they, it may be possible that a and b are uh, in the networks and they are Polar parts, okay, but still 
they will uh, show that that uh, uh, they, uh, a is a neighbor of b and b is a neighbor of a so whatever the information b will get we will send to the a a will further send to its neighbors okay so now uh, with, uh, and the hope count of that one will be one okay so now that device will find out that okay so a is neighbor to b so if you have to go from uh, this network suppose in this scenario suppose there is a x is there or there is y is there so agar isse yahan pe jane ka suppose uh, hope count 3 tha now you can say that this hope count is 2 so we will share the uh, uh, instead of just choosing this particular path we will choose this particular path and this uh, uh, information will be uh, uh, simply drop or simply are uh, not further forwarding or in some cases it may be possible that uh, the hope count of that one is uh, not appropriate so that will be drop in some due to that reasons so there are uh, these possible attacks are also possible in the case of network layer then uh, due to routing protocols and uh, we already know that uh, the information to transfer from one network to another network this is the responsibility of routers so it may be possible that some intermediate devices are misdirection and you can take the example of that one uh, that device is misbehaving and he will uh, create a network uh, and make sure that uh, all the data should be passed to this particular uh, path only so he is created or misdirected to the uh, all the other networks okay in some cases he will just simply partition the networks and just make and uh, create a scenario like that this is some different networks and this is some different networks so i cannot broadcast in the this networks okay so in that case you just assume that there is a, a network partition is there so you cannot forward that particular and in some cases uh, there is a loop, routing loop will be there you can consider like that if a and b both are misbehaving start misbehaving then they will be uh, he will transfer b will transfer the packet to a a will transfer the packet to, to b and uh, again uh, due to this misbehavior of a and b they will share the information with each other only and no further uh, transfer the information to the further devices so there is a uh, rpl exploits and uh, these are the different possible attacks in the case of rpl rpl is basically routing protocol which are more appropriate for uh, your uh, internet of things because there are different different constraints are there in, in the internet of things so we cannot apply basic routing protocol which are applicable in computer network so we have to use some uh, modification of uh, routing protocol and one of the example of that one is rpl so it is a new uh, routing protocol and there are many issues uh, which are uh, related to the this particular info, uh, routing protocol so there may be uh, uh, some of the attacks of your uh, uh, rpl is uh, rpl some of the possible attack on the R, uh, rpls are basically uh, local repair attack uh, this is local repair attack in that case um, just router is uh, you are not authentic and he is just simply sending the local repair information and not trying uh, not allowing to tra transfer the data while in this case there may be a rank attack as also possible so this is basically attack in which your uh, node uh, just improve their uh, Uh, priority and just uh, trying to make sure that all the data should be passed in this direction only and uh, uh, when they are creating the final table they are using some kind of graph is there so again there may be possibility that graph version may be change and if uh, you wanted to make sure that new attacker will have to choose and or your all over network only just creating the a particular graph only to so, wahan pe kya hoga wo uh, root node or whatever the attack node is there he will just change the version or saying that this is the updated uh, graph or this is the updated uh, tree in the network so all the peers just starting to create another uh, again doing the all the topologies again and just creating the final path and then again he will just share the information that now this is the updated graph so instead of just sharing the information they are just trying to creating the topology that's it and there is a six low pan uh, uh, protocol which is basically communication protocol for uh, the full form of this one is ipv6 low power uh, wireless personal area network which is basically your uh, communication protocol for your iot and uh, the pro and there are some issues uh, with the 6 uh, low pan protocol and there is a, one of the uh, issues uh, is their fragmentation because uh, if we at the lower layer suppose we are using 802.15.4 the size of this one is mtu size of this case is basically 127 bytes while if we are using six low pan at the upper layer or this is working as a suppose data link layer okay or maybe physical while in the case of uh, this will work as a ip layer so now the uh, size of this one is suppose mtu of this one is uh, normally it is 1 to 80 bytes 
so you have to uh, because your system does not allow or your uh, lower layer does not allow so you have to fragment this packets so when you just going to fragment this packet then it may be possible uh, because uh, authentication normally authentication is not applicable or at each fragment packet so authentication information sirf ek packet pe hoti hai jo aapka initial packet hota hai so you will not having the authentication information to each and every packet so this is my packet 1 and further due to constraint i have to distribute this packet into p1 p2 and p3 now uh, this p1 will having the authentication information but p2 and p3 will not having the authentication information so now attacker can attack on these things so this is the problem with the case of the six flow pan okay then in the case of transport layer so again this and synchronization at the transport layer again possibilities and when you are just making the uh, communication either using using tcp or udp you have to share the information or you have to handshake okay in the case of the tcp you have to handshake and if there is a some error is there in the case of segment uh, in the case of flag value or sequence number is not appropriate so there will be disynchronized okay then this is the your uh, transport layer protocol which is basically message queuing telemetry transport protocol uh, which is basically used for the message transfer at the transport layer in the case of your iot and uh, this is your your uh, publish subscriber base model and uh, there may be the different uh, Uh, attacks may be possible because MQTT by default uh, doesn't having any security. So the uh, if you wanted to provide the security, either you can use the uh, network layer security or your uh, either it is SSL or PSL on that, or maybe you can use the uh, secure version of that one, which is basically MS MQTT secure MQTT. This is the same concept as we already know that HTTP and uh, your uh, HTTPS. Okay, secure HTTP. then uh, in the case of transport layer session hijacking also possible so uh, you know that in the case of sctp there are uh, not only one communication or connection link is created between a and b you have create more than one communication link between these a and b okay so it may be possible that uh, you are just uh, they, they are using a and b are using this particular communication uh, or uh, link and it will be available freely so some another device may be c So can use this particular uh, ip or this particular communication link for the communication with b so session hijack is also possible and uh, next one is sin flooding attack this is the most uh, uh, familiar kind of attack in the case of transport layer i think you should familiar with sin flooding attack when you are just making the uh, tcp handshaking uh, first of all he will send the uh, message then he will uh, give the authentication of that one and finally he will share the this one so three way handshaking in the case of tcp so uh, the problem with the tcp is when you just send this particular request he will just allocate the resources okay so it uh, it may be possible that this is a not a authentic user and after receiving this particular uh, message he is not sending this one so now this resources are allocated so you cannot allocate this resources to the authentic users okay so there may be a case of sin flooding attack and how you can solve the sin flooding attack with the help of uh, your uh, cookies message can be provided or cookies can be used or instead of just providing the uh, here resource allocated here just allow them to uh, reply back uh, this one fourth one sorry uh, allow them to reply fourth and when you are getting this particular appropriate message then you will allow the resource allocation so that may be the one possible solution in the case of your sin flooding attack using the cookies so instead of just allocating the resources here just send the cookie here okay so if you reply a co uh, cookie positively then we'll uh, allow that particular resource to you only so when he will respond in the fourth way in the fourth message then only you can uh, allocate the resources so now uh, at the application layer again there may be uh, different different uh, uh, attacks are there either maybe the uh, uh, cope attack by uh, or maybe the false data injection because you are working on the application layer so it may be uh, you can uh, exploit the cope this is basically constraint application uh, protocol which is working on the uh, application layer in the case of iot you can uh, in some cases your uh, information is falsely added and in some cases your end to end data is uh, uh, attacked or uh, dos attack of in the case of the final destination source to final destination and uh, you just block all the uh, communication link and in some cases when you are just creating the program that particular program is recreated or that particular program is 
added in such a way because uh, uh, so that your whatever the information will be there that will be not applicable so at the application you have to just uh, make sure that your uh, software should be updated so when you try to update the software that you write some uh, malicious code here and then it will be you know, just simply attack is possible on that case so uh, uh, if we're talking about the different protocols and uh, uh, again uh, different protocols if we're talking about the rfid or bluetooth Zigbee or RPL, so different different attacks are maybe possible in this case also. So uh, this is again same uh, as we already discussed in the case of your uh, layer attack as well as your uh, the, uh, previous slides. Okay, so these are some uh, attacks which are related to the some protocols only. Okay, so now uh, uh, I think I will take hardly ten to fifteen minutes more. So just uh, cooperate with me. Okay, uh, so uh, defending again again various attacks towards the iot so till now we discussed the what are the different different attacks are possible so now this is uh, totally based uh, depend on the your research okay so there are different different uh, research methods are there or different different research algorithms are there which providing different different mechanism to providing the solution of a different attacks okay so there is no hard and fast rules are there and there is no hard and fast guidelines are there. You have to use the predefined methods or predefined uh, algorithms. Either you are using AES, DES, or um, I'm just giving the name, or you can use the hash function uh, or uh, for the authentication or for the confidentiality. Same uh, algorithm can be used, but uh, you have to just apply the little bit constraint because there are devices are tiny devices and the data are not so large and you cannot allow that device to be so much uh, computation power. So what uh, uh, if there are different different some of the uh, possible solutions of different attacks may be there and we are uh, I'm discuss of some of them okay not all uh, it is a huge area and uh, we are discuss little bit about that so in order to defend IoT from node tempering attacks so node might be equipped with the temper resistant hardware that can be used so you can provide some kind of shield so to prevent or you can provide you know, some kind of support or you can providing some kind of and human beings to safety for those devices okay and uh, for uh, detecting the jamming attack there may be some kind of swarm intelligence approach may be applicable this is uh, a approach in this case how they are detecting they are just providing the uh, using the swarm detection techniques and uh, using the same concept and then uh, if there is a uh, more uh, uh, data is, um, or more packets are there uh, within a, a specific period of time or a specific area then you will just simply generate a, uh, your uh, signal for that so that is some kind of mechanism which is using by the swarm intelligent techniques in order to defend the iot against collision and uh, exception attacks request rate of each node might be limited so there may be one possible solution so if you wanted to uh, remove from the collision attacks, so it may be possible that each and every device only allowed to send limited number of packets. Okay. And uh, maybe uh, you can say that for limited amount of time, you allow to send a packet. So in that case, you can say that the time division multiplexing can be applied for that also. So that can maybe the one of the solution for your, your collision attacks. For uh, denial of sleep or link layer flooding attack, how you can provide the solution and uh, the IDS approach can be intrusion detection system approach can be used for denial of sleep or your link layer flooding attack. Okay, so in that case, you just create a vector for each and every peer, peer and just find out the uh, globe and, and local values of that particular value updated value, and if they are uh, updated value is allowing you to uh, uh, allow that particular peer into the network then allow otherwise simply discard that particular so this is a uh, honey trap is one of the approach by which you can uh, use uh, you can solve this method or maybe the score based incentive approach you can use uh, in some cases game theory approach can be used or reward based mechanism in some cases maybe the trust mechanism either maybe the two way trust mechanism or three way trust mechanism can be used for the denial of services as well as the link layer flooding these are the these uh, uh, solution can also provide the solution for the loop attacks okay sorry hole attacks either it is the warm uh, uh, your black hole or warm hole or your gray hole and gray hole is a little bit difficult to uh, uh, analyze because in that case you are uh, forwarding the selective packets 
so it will be quite difficult again uh, there are different methods are there by which you can provide the solution for the uh, gray hole attack also then uh, how you can defense against the against the hello flooding so force every node to authenticate each of its neighbor so uh, or you can say that the trust based mechanism can be used for uh, providing the solution against the hello flooding attack then uh, there may be node replications may be there then how you can providing the solution against the road rep node replication by using some kind of uh, cryptography mechanism either in uh, public you are you should be familiar with the public private key cryptography so using this particular key cryptography me methods providing the authentication for the user uh, with the uh, your uh, location itself you can provide the solution for the node replications so when uh, you say that this is the node a and uh, now he is trying to behave like node b so there should be some kind of authentication method should be there so each and every packet should be delivered with the help of the uh, encrypted uh, of that particular private key okay so then only you can provide the solution of this particular attack okay then uh, defense against the sin flooding attack there may be the uh, we already discussed that sin cookie you can use and uh, for the sin flooding and in the case of the defense against the rpl ex exploit because rpl is a new algorithm so the attacks are very uh, very much possible on this particular your uh, uh, routing protocol so you, still uh, there are some solutions are available in the case of this particular um, protocol with the help of some kind of your uh, updation packet or you can use some Uh, you can use some uh, 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 mechanism by which you allow only one user or authentic user to be update the information, or or you with the help of the trust mechanism you can make sure that only the trustworthy user is allowed to share the uh, topology of the network to the other nodes. And how you can solve the MQTT problem with the help of the secure MQTT, or maybe the uh, you you can use the SSL or you you can use the uh, DSL TLS also. for the solution of the uh, attacks on possible on nqtt then session hijacking uh, with the help of uh, proper authentication for each packet or each channel you can also provide the uh, solution for the session hijacking now uh, there may be if uh, there are some research scholars are there and they wanted to uh, implement all these things then what are the possible software or simulators are there so some uh, these are uh, some simulators on which you can perform uh, iot uh, uh, kind of thing if i am talking about the simulation only if you wanted to perform on the hardware then you should familiar with the your uh, uh, arduino or your uh, different different hardware whatever available and in the case of simulators because this is uh, creating a simul uh, simulation environment is uh, not feasible for each and every individual uh, or if uh, each and individual Uh, uh university or college also so you can use the simulator so there are different simulators are there sumo omnet plus plus open street map or ns3 all are open source softwares are there so you can use this one for finding the uh, uh, security uh, uh, algorithm or verify that security algorithm you can use the avispa also then uh, this is i think uh, one of the last uh, content or last two slides i think so how uh, iot security uh, is there any security service providers are there so there are different different service providers are there I, this is verizon service provider then there is a trust wave service provider then there is a palladion trust provider and then the cy player trust uh, security providers are there so verizon is basically provide iot security credential services and they will providing the upper layer services and layer and they will simply add over the uh, a secure layer for that one so they are using the cryptography techniques uh, for secure communication in the network okay so they may use uh, some different different approaches for according to the uh, criticalness of the uh, uh, users and again there may be different different authentication approaches are there for uh, different different application as well as for the different different devices okay it may be use the different uh, encryption algorithm as well as some cases uh, hash functions may be used while in the case of the trust wave it offers a managed uh, managed iot service security service to monitor and secure iot infrastructure and services the services allow uh, developers and providers of iot product and service to perform security scanning of embedded devices interface applications backend services and the apis 
then uh, uh, there is another uh, service provider Peladion. Uh, it provides the managed security services with cyber defense capability beyond the traditional uh, MSSP services. And it combines the machine learning algorithm or maybe the artificial intelligence to provide the solution of your uh, security issues in the case of IoT. While uh, CY Flare uh, is basically used for the uh, providing the security in the case of the healthcare organizations. Okay. So these are uh, these are not only uh, service provider. There are many other service providers are also there. So for basic understanding purposes, these are the some uh, attacks are there in the case of IoT and attacks or different different layer and attack or different different uh, protocols uh, are there. And uh, what are the possible solutions are there? Again, possible solutions are not limited. Uh, you can provide the solution according to your convenience. Okay, you can create your own topology, or you can create your own routing protocol. You can create your own uh, your uh, algorithm for security algorithm for creating some maybe authentication, maybe some uh, data integrity also. Okay. So and then these are the services uh, IoT service providers. Okay. So that's uh, I think uh, uh, from my side and. Uh, uh, that's uh, the basic idea of uh, IoT services and uh, IoT, uh, your uh, introduction about the IoT. Okay. So, uh, just a second. In case uh, the participants would like to ask any clarifications or doubts, you can use the chat window and uh, do that, please. Okay. So, one more thing uh, if, if you face any problem, then you can use this mail ID. Okay. Just a second here. Oh, I'm just writing my mail ID here. This is Kumar P at the rate NITJ dot AC dot in. So in future, if you have any issues or you have any doubts, you can also communicate with this mail ID also.